Hi, welcome to another episode of Crime Pays the Bonnie Does. You can see I got a nice hat. I got a nice new Theo hat. We're in Wangare. It's pronounced Fangare, but you can also call it Bangarang, which is what I'm going to be calling for the rest of this uh, episode. But we're here to document three species of psilocybe mushroom that uh, tend to come up in uh, areas of human habitation and landscaping, uh, one of which is undescribed. So let's go check it out. And what you said, what were you saying? You think this is undescribed or no? Uh, I was saying that Psilocybe baocystis matches the sequence of Psilocybe fasciata from Japan, so those could be synonyms. But they're looking at just ITS, right? How, how likely is it that if you're just looking at ITS and something's a perfect match that they're the same species? ITS will get you about 98% of the way there, so it'll get the exact species most of the time, but sometimes you have to use morphology to get the exact species. It'll definitely get you to the group. So you could have identical ITS sequences, but still be different species or different, certainly different morphology. Other parts of the genome would still... It depends on what you call a species, really. It could be. So that Psilocybe subsicodioides has 100% ITS match to the epitype of Psilocybe cyanescens. So you could say they're the same species, but it's just a different form. But I think they're different enough that I'd be okay calling that a different species. So it's got, that's the Subsicodioides, which is not described yet, right? It's not published? No one's published it, yeah. It's got a similar ITS, same ITS, identical ITS to Cyanescens, but you would yeah. call that a different species. Yeah, and Jan Borvitka um, published an epitype sequence of Psilocybe Cyanescens, so we know exactly what that is. So Luke, who, who are we looking at here? What's going on here? Coming up at the base of these, uh, is this Formium? What are these? I don't even know what these fucking monocuts are. What are these guys? So these are Psilocybe angulospora. This is angulospora. Is that a New Zealand endemic? No, they were originally sequenced in Taiwan. Ah. And then we sequenced them here and they match. The Taiwan ones were found in dung and ours grow exclusively in pot plants and planted gardens. In potted plants, wow, yeah. okay. So, but they were likely introduced here though, huh? Yes. Yep. And someone sent me one from India the other day. Yeah, I had a look at that, and that's one of those ones where it's a, a match on ITS, but it doesn't look like doesn't Angulospora. Look like yeah. So this is, yeah, this is quite a photogenic clump. Beautiful color on those too. Yeah, they dry a very, very pale white. It's quite easy to distinguish them from the Cyanocens group just from looking at them from the top. And the um, psychedelic experience you get from them is short, two, two and a half hours, very vibrant, not too much mental gymnastics. They're brilliant. Prominent umbo on that cap too, huh? Very prominent. It looks like a nipple that's been flagellated. Oh yeah, you've got it, you've got it. Is that an annulus? Yeah. It's got a little annulus on her. And these come out, so tell me, these are not in section cyanescence? No, section semilanceata. What are, what are some characteristic traits of semilanceata? Um, the stipes are often a little bit uh, thinner. Um, can be thick, depending on growing conditions, but generally they're a bit thinner and more textured. Um, the gills is one of the main features. They have very pale close together. Oh yeah, thin. that's look um, at that distinct bluish gray color. The odd one out is Tasmaniana which has very wide gills. Psilocybe so Tasmaniana is, and you get that here too, right? Yes, and they're very closely related. They can actually look very, very similar. And these things don't have any pleurocystidia. Oh. So everything in Psilocybe has chylocystidia, which is on the gill edges, but pleurocystidia is on the rest of the gill. So you take the gill excluding the edge and you look at it under the microscope at 400 times and you can see little bottle-shaped cells. Nobody really knows what they do. Maybe it keeps the humidity up. But everything in section semilanceidae is completely lacking in pleurocystidia. Or if they're there, they're extremely rare. Cetus. Oh my god. Look at all those. Oh, look like the, the, the mollusks, the slugs been eating them, huh? Yep. These colors. Why don't you go ahead and grab some of those for me? Let's just take a little look at... Oh. Got the hygrophonous cat that dries really pale. So, so tell everybody what hygrophonous means. So hygrophonous is when the cap dries, it changes color slowly from the outside in, and it goes a bit paler. They also bruise really heavily. These ones aren't, oh, there's an ant having a little munch on that one. And has anyone analyzed the psilocybin content on these? I don't believe so, but from personal experience, they're on the weaker side. 
God, look at that umbo. That is wild. So these these quite likely evolved uh, in, somewhere in Asia. Yes. And then were transported here. Probably in landscape in, and mulch. Yeah, in mulch or composting or something. Uh, one garden over, and that's the Psilocybe Tasmaniana, or what we in New Zealand call Tasmaniana. These are all Tasmaniana. Yeah, and oh, they're yeah, they related a bit to more the Angiospora, but distinctly different. So is this, does this species even occur in Tasmania? Kind we don't think so. What was described in Tasmania doesn't match what we in New Zealand call Tasmaniana, but we, yeah, we don't really know if Tasmaniana is its own mushroom. The description matches Alutasia perfectly. So these, I think this, it's probably Alutasia. I think so. This yeah, has an orange color. It's got like an orange color to it. Alan, how would you how would you describe these, especially differing with uh, uh, the ones we were just looking at? Well, the cap's a little more, a little thicker. You can see the gills are thicker. It's uh, a little more convex and it does not have that ring on the stem, so you don't see any kind of annulus here. The other very distinguishing thing between the two species is Tasmaniana will always have visible spores and mottled gills, but Angulospora usually, 90% of the time, will not leave a spore print. The section Semilensiata is characterized by lack of pleurostidia. You can see the young caps are really dark, walnut brown and then they quickly fade to a light tan color and these have a pretty acute umbo on the top unlike some of the other species around here that are a lot more convex so alan you're saying what they're calling psilocybe tasmaniana is probably not tasmaniana huh? no psilocybe tasmaniana is really psilocybe alutasia and where does that occur where is, what's its natural distribution Oh, it's all over Australia, New Zealand, and some of the islands uh, out here. Um, and I think it also turned up in Argentina at real high elevation. That one's in GenBank as Psilocybe pelliculosa, but it's a close relative to pelliculosa. And you're saying GenBank, so you're, you're looking at, you've, you've, you've sequenced most of these before, huh? Yeah. This, this is Angulospora. Okay. It has many islands over here. God, look at how blue that is, though. It's beautiful. And again, that's just uh, psilocin, huh? Yes, the psilocin polymerizing. So these mushrooms have enzymes um, that turn the tryptamines into psilocybin. So that's the psilocybin pathway. And then they have an enzyme that dephosphorylates the psilocybin into psilocin. And another enzyme that polymerizes the psilocin into this blue compound. So the compound that is blue is a polymer of psilocin. There's an enzyme that polymerizes it, and that is not active. The psilocin itself is what is active. Psilocybin is inactive. However, it gets transformed into psilocin in your body. Well, Tasmaniana is doing very well for itself here. Yeah. Looking. They typically um, flush really hard the first year and then less and then disappear. Is their food source starts to decline yeah. unless it gets re-upped or something. Yeah. People got to come out here and dump some mulch. Yes. You could see these. I think there's next to them, but I'm not those lovely brown spores. So what is this what is the psilocybin content in a Tasmaniana? Lower than cyanocin's group? It was but actually, noticeable. There was a study that was done that included it and it was pretty low the what they got, but yeah. everything was low in that study. Was that the study where they tested the 20 year old Sumeruginosa? Yeah. Similar to Aztecorum probably, which is another low yielding species. Yeah, These also these they, they dry paper light so who is this this is baocystis we don't Possibly. know we it's, don't know what this is we don't know what it is it doesn't so, look like anything we know so you have upwards of at least two possibly three or four psilocybe species coming up in this this mulch bed these all these mulch beds at together yeah at least three yeah, yeah look there's like, look at it. right look there at everybody See that? having fun that prominent umbo this is what i'm here for so this is why is it an angular spore? I guess it's a reference to how the spores look under a microscope. Angular, slightly angular shaped spores. Oh, look at that prominent uh, annulus. It's so blue. And they often have that ring of blue around the stem. And what's the largest size they'll reach? They get big. pretty big. Um, I've had them palm sized. Um, palm sized. Yeah. Wow. But that was me growing them in a pot plant it's in a controlled environment. Oh Jesus Christ! Bought from the store, not, not. Um, 
Those just popped up. Yeah, so you buy them from the store with them already in it, and then you take them home and nurture them and get much more. Oh, so the garden store is inadvertently selling uh, grow your own mushroom kits. Yeah. yeah. That's nice. Beautiful was... ornamental mushrooms. <laughs> yeah, those are large, so that's almost baseball size, huh? Yeah, they're pretty big. You can see everyone just hanging out here, having a nice time. You know, the passers-by get you know curious about what's going on. Maybe you get them into you know beginning uh, stages of mycology. Also got this Ropolo stylus palm planted. They're planting native plants here, which is cool. New Zealand's only native palm species. Very beautiful. They got a they got a couple specimens at San Francisco Botanic Garden too. Look at this Prumnopitus ferruginea, native podocarp. All right, one of like over 20 species of poto, uh, the family Podocarpaceae that occurs in New Zealand. Planted as a native plant in a garden and acting as a, a shade for uh, the psychoactive mushrooms growing beneath it. So you can see this has a brown stem and then the stem is covered in this white mycelium. So that's called the context, the middle of it there. So you just slice that open with your handy pocket razor blade. Yeah, a brand new razor blade is really good for cross sections. So it's it's another mycologist tool right up there with the KOH and a UV flashlight. Yep. What species is this that we got here? Um, they could be what we call Sorcive Tasmaniana. They could be a phenotype of it, or it could be a new species. We just haven't done enough. But these things are quite large. They're much larger than what we just looked at. Morphologically, they're a bit different as well. They go upturned and wavy, and oh, they have Jesus. much thicker stipes. Oh God, Jesus Christ! But that's still that really lovely they light color, them. yeah, and, the, and that that blue, those blue veins, that blue bruising. Not veins, but just areas where the, the cap has broken a little bit. And oh yeah, the slugs were going to town on these too. The slugs love. Them. So what are they eating here? What is the mulch? You know, you know what the um, it'll be mostly Pinus radiata, um, but these ones are associated with what has been planted. So they're growing under the trees because they were in the compost that was in the pot, and then they've colonized and spread into the wood chip and the, the clay and dirt underneath it. So we're calling that other one Tasmaniana that we saw over there, but that's different from this. <sighs> we need to get them sequenced yeah, to be sure. But, they are so plastic and environmentally changeable depending on what the conditions like if it's because it's a little bit more sheltered with shrubbery in all directions yeah, they are it possible. could you be growing conditions higher. they're very phenotypically plastic because they, they're growing in a whole range of environmental conditions for example these ones here are surrounded by by shrubbery it's a bit of mirror bush here um, and the atmospheric humidity is probably a lot higher than in the more exposed sites which which means they can grow up quite a lot larger before the water availability becomes an So issue. different, little subtle variations between sites lead to yeah, variations and and how big they can get and how they're basically yeah. how they how they grow. Microclimate. Right. Okay. Right. So this, so this, we're calling this Tasmaniana because it lines up with it in ITS. But how did you know? How does this differ from the Tasmaniana that was named in Australia? Well, the problem is the, the holotype of Tasmaniana, the person who first applied the name Tasmaniana to this thing uh, probably never consulted the holotype, which is the actual mushroom that's tied to the name. When the description is made, right. the guy who describes it says, I am now designating, say, I'm designating this mushroom to be the official reference example of Tasmaniana, um, of the name Solosibi Tasmaniana. Now, Somebody sequenced a mushroom from Australia and gave it the name Tasmaniana. Tasmaniana was described originally from Manfield in Tasmania. Mm -hmm. Then a few years later, two mycologists decided that it was a synonym of Psilocybis subaruginosa. Oh. And then someone in Australia uh, started calling something Psilocybis Tasmaniana. I'm not sure why. Um, and we think that's a what's called a taxonomic misapplication of the name. They are they're saying it's Tasmaniana, but we don't know that it is or isn't. It probably isn't, um, because I've never seen this thing growing in Tasmania. That doesn't necessarily mean anything. I just think it's a likelihood. This is identical in sequence to the thing that someone in Australia is calling Tasmaniana, but um, some of us taxonomists think that 
calling that Australian thing Tasmaniana in the first place wasn't entirely certain. But we, there's doubt as to whether it's the correct name or not. But whatever it is, it doesn't matter. This is something new and interesting. Imagine I pick this up and I say, hey, cool, Psilocybe Cyan Essence. And I sequence it and I put a sequence in GenBank as Psilocybe Cyan Essence. And then people in other parts of the world find my sequence in GenBank, they sequence their stuff and it's identical and they say, ah, we've got Psilocybe Cyan Essence. So now they're all going to call it Psilocybe Cyan Essence just because I said it was Psilocybe Cyan Essence and put it in GenBank. But can you, are you able to tell that I knew what Cyan Essence was in the first place and that I identified it correctly in the first place? Right, so the, the sequence may not be the actual That's species. Right. It may not match up with, with, match up with the holotype. That's was. right. So, you know, to, to anyone who's just coming out here to, you know, get to trip out or get, you know, experience a psychoactive mushroom, sure, none of this stuff's interesting, but that shouldn't be the purpose. Just getting high shouldn't be the purpose. The purpose should be to understand how evolution works and how species end up speciating, changing phenotypically, uh, how they adapt to different environments, how they get dispersed around the world biogeographically, uh, especially by humans or if they were already occurring in certain native habitats, etc. But apparently, this Psilocybe species, whatever the shit it is, is really enjoying this Pinus radiata mulch. Here we go, nice illustration of a hygrophonous cap right there. Oh yeah, there you go. So not, not all mushroom species will do this. This is one of the more diagnostic characters of the genus Psilocybe. Como se dice hygrophonous? So what are we calling these in the meantime? What are we calling it? Tasmaniana? Tasmaniana CF. <laughs> and tell everybody what C tell everybody what CF means. CF means circa forma or, or close to the form or close to the shape of. But so, generally implies that something we don't know what it is. Yeah, so there's two terms that are used, AF and CF. Like say if I call these psilocybe AF Tasmaniana, what that tells you is that this is a psilocybe species that I think looks like Psilocybe Tasmaniana, but probably isn't. We of course use this with plants and with, uh, yeah. I guess not so much with animals. So that, that AF really... term means it looks like something else. It has affinities to something else, but it's probably a different species. My hope is that, you know, maybe, may, maybe getting into psychoactive stuff will be your gateway drug into studying evolution and uh, genetics and all kinds of other interesting shit that uh, is a lot more fulfilling than just a, a four hour uh, journey uh, to another uh, dimension, <laughs> for lack of a better word. Not knocking a four-hour journey to another dimension, or a four-hour journey to to the depths of your own mind. You know, because that's that's what you do here. You know, you get some insight, some self-insight into your own bullshit. You become a little bit more allergic to your own bullshit. Become a better person, but not always. Some people just you know have a jackass time, get weird, and uh, don't learn anything. But you know. Psychedelics just give you the tools. They don't necessarily promise anything. But either way, a lot more interesting stuff going on here than just, uh, you know, an easy trip in some mulch beds. Well, I guess that's about it for today. Park security over there is getting a little curious about us, so we're just gonna, we're just gonna loaf on. We'll leave Alan here. You can tell him about uh, mushroom taxonomy if they're interested. Anyway, that's all I got for this evening. This afternoon, have a good day. Go fuck yourself. Bye. Oh my God, this is so cool. I'm magic. Yeah. Suicide angle explorer. Yeah. Suicide. Suicide. Really See, the, the thing I love about Alan is he's happy to teach everybody, you know, random yeah. random strangers come up, he yeah. just gives them a nice yeah. intro into in fungal oh, phylogenies, in the ecology, so the different no traits, you know, just really, glowing a green color. really an advocate of uh, biodiversity so awareness. This is uh, grass called paspalum, yeah. and they yeah. have a fungus called claviceps paspali on it. And that makes ergot alkaloids, so it's like really similar to LSD. And then there's a hyperparasite growing on the Claviceps paspalii that you can see on here. And so there's like three things going on at once. Wow. Wow. Yeah. And did you study mushrooms? Yeah, yeah, I'm studying them. Wow. <laughs> we're, we're studying them. He's studying them for life. Yeah, wow. Ooh. Pretty good color, right? Yeah. Oh, that's something I've seen interrupt You were like looking for a lost piece yeah. or something over there. We get that a lot. Yeah. yeah. People yeah. coming up and saying, oh, have you lost something? Yeah, yeah, Can no, I help nothing. you? Yeah. Okay, so anyway, here we are at the uh, garden section of a nearby big box store, uh, checking out the uh, psychoactive mushrooms that they have uh, coming up in their, their potted citrus. Uh, Alan, you want to tell us what we're going to do here right now? Today, we're going to look for psilocybe in the garden section. So we got some real interesting species here. 
I think uh, we got a few pots that have psilocybe in them. I think they're all the same. This one will probably turn out to be the one that comes out close to psilocybe uh, stuntii in the phylogeny. Is this one you've sequenced before then? Uh, no, I think, uh, I don't know who sequenced it. Jerry. Jerry sequenced it. So, you know, oh yeah, I could see the bluing on that, uh, where it's been damaged a little bit, where that cap has been. So tell me, tell us about this species, Alan. So this is a species of psilocybe in section semilanciate, real close to psilocybe stuntii, but a couple base pairs different. Probably has not been named yet. And uh, where was it first spotted coming up? I don't know. But it's certainly uh, enjoying these chips they're putting into the soil here for this uh, citrus. Yeah, they're common in plant pots. Hey, look, we got some gallerinas coming up in those pots too. So definitely, you know, don't just go stuffing anything in your mouth that you find in a potted nursery plant at a, at a big box store. These mushrooms that we're looking at now, they were first found by myself and a group of friends in council wood chip gardens. And uh, they were originally being called Tasmaniana, like, a lot of our mushrooms seem to get grouped as that and um, we recognized they were something different so we went and got them sequenced and they are 15 base pairs away from Angulospora and then a little bit less slightly closer to Stuntsy. So 15 DNA letters yep. looking at ITS yep. uh, away from uh, Angulospora. Yeah so they're definitely something related to Angulospora, Stuntsii, Tasmaniana but they're distinctly different. So you think there's got to be at least four or five species being referred, separate species being referred to as the Tasmaniana? <sighs> Maybe three at the moment, and I'm sure the next species that pops up in a pot plant will probably get called that for a little while until somebody does the work on it. Um, but yeah, that, that seems to be what most pot plant species with wide hanging gills that produce spore prints are lumped as. It's always Tasmaniana CF. And where is Silasby Stuntsii native to? Washington and Oregon. So where, where do you think this is native to? It's kind of hard to say because these things get moved New around Zealand. the world. Oh, you think this is this is a New Zealand native? Yeah, I think so. What are you doing now? You're setting up a photo shot. Yeah, I need a picture of these. 